Hi everyone, Steven here, and today I'm going to exchange my old thermostat for the new Ecobee 4 that we got. I did the install because we have two thermostats in the house, one upstairs and one downstairs. So today I'm going to show you how to install the one downstairs here if you have a C wire. If you don't, you're actually going to need the power cable extender kit right here that comes with the Eco B4. I'm not going to show you that. So if you don't have a C wire underneath here, and you can actually just usually check by lifting off that. And if you actually see in these wires here that it has a C right wire right here, that's the power wire to the actual unit, then this video is gonna help you with that. If you don't have that and you actually have to use this extender, you're most likely gonna wanna find another video that's gonna go in depth with that because I'm not gonna show you how to do that in this video. All right, so before you actually get started on the install, one of the things you're gonna wanna do is actually turn off your heating unit. So we see the two blinking lights here, which just lets me know everything's working fine. There should be a switch by this. You just turn off the switch those turn off and then now I'm ready to go and install the actual thermostat so let's go ahead and cut over to that now all right so now we're at the actual thermostat and we can take this off now you can see there's no power to it so I can just pop this right off like this one of the things that you're gonna want to do before you start unplugging anything is you actually want to take a photo of this that way you know which wires are which just in case or if something happens and you need to change something up. It's just a good safety precaution before you actually get into this. Now, once we're here, mine are actually kind of screwed in. I can't just yank them out, so I'm gonna have to unscrew all of these so that I can pull that out. And one of the cool things is that this actually comes with some labels, so you don't have to memorize that. As I pull it out, I'll actually just put one of these stickers on there and I know which one is which. So, Let's go ahead and get into that. All right, so now we have all of our wires pulled out. They're all labeled. A couple things to look on in here. I'm on the black side for the labels just because uh, this is the wires if you don't have um, the control board uh, one here. So if you don't have the C and you actually need that adapter, you're going to be using these down here. I have these up here. I'm not using all of them, obviously. I'm just matching them to what it says here, like Y1, W1, right? Well, there's a Y2 and a W2 here also. So th those will be different. Just make sure that you label those correctly. Now, once I have all that on, I can actually take this screen off now. All right, now that the other um, adapter is off of this, uh, I'm actually gonna use the faceplate. If you don't want to, that's where you might be a little bit more concerned with what's painted underneath this. Our house was built in 1990. Uh, the previous owners have painted a handful of times. You can actually see where they had another unit before they put this current unit, unit in because they've patched the wall here. Um, but because this is so large, it's actually going to cover the white here, so I don't have to mess with painting, which is really, really cool. Because uh, matching this might be a problem, just because I don't know if we have the old paints that they used on this in the garage. Now, if you don't want to use this faceplate, that's where it might be an issue. But with this faceplate, cord's going to slide through here and through here. I want to make sure that this is level. I'll mark where I'm going to drill in the holes and set this. So, let's go ahead and get that done now. And then once you have it set, we're actually just going to fill that in. And then remove all of this. And now we can get this set to the wall. All right, so now that we have those holes drilled, we're actually just gonna set our wall anchors in here. All right, so now the fun part starts because you're gonna take the corresponding wire and you're gonna plug it in to the corresponding port. So, you wanna make sure that all these are organized 
and then everything can reach where it needs to go. So C goes to C and they plug in from the side here, not the top. As you plug that in, it'll actually click that into place. You want to make sure that it's nice and snug in there, okay? And then if you have R, right, it's not going to go into RH. A lot of people make the mistake where they plug it over here and then it doesn't work. You want to make sure you plug it into RC over here. Plugs in, nice and secure. And it tells you the difference, because I have Y1. There's Y1 and Y2 on this, so I have to make sure that I plug that into Y1. Make sure it's nice and secure in there. Good. You do a final check just to make sure that they're not loose in that, and they're actually very, very secure in there. Once you have this, you're actually good to go. You can now plug your Ecobee on top of this, making sure that these wires aren't going to get caught or anything like that. So moment of truth. Well, technically it's not going to turn on actually just yet because I haven't turned on the unit. Now, we'll hook this on. It plugs in just like that. So, now is the moment of truth because we're actually going to go turn back our HVAC system on and see if this thing powers on. So, let's click over to that. Just turned it on. And it's actually starting up right now. It says, please give me a moment while I stretch my wings. And it'll go through this whole setup process now, but this is good to go. Now, if those wires were mixed up, for instance, I've seen a video where the lady accidentally plugged it in, the, the red cord onto the uh, other side. It wouldn't turn on. So if, if you don't have this configured right, typically it won't turn on. So if you're having problems with that, go back to your cords and look through that again and make sure that everything's lined out how it should be. So this is getting set up now. We'll go ahead and cut to when I have all of this configured because it's a whole setup process. You're going to have to make sure that you have the app. Um, if you're going to use Alexa, you're going to have to make sure that you have it paired in the Alexa app and that it has access to your Amazon account so that it can sync all of those things. And then you're actually going to have to enable um, within the skill section of the Amazon Alexa app, you're going to have to allow Alexa to um, have access to the Ecobee so you can do voice commands. For instance, Alexa, turn the temperature down two degrees. It will allow you to do that from here. So we'll go ahead and cut now and I'm going to show you guys once this is actually all set up and Alexa's up and running and good to go. So I actually wanted to show something on the setup side. So when you plug it in, it says, let's get this set up. It asks you if you have one or just two of the uh, R cords or wires plugged in. So whether you have the just the red, which is going to be RC, or if you have two, which is going to be the RC and the RH here. This is important though, because you have to make sure that your setup is correct. It's actually duplicated from what you plugged in to this. So mine actually showed up and it wasn't. So I had to go back and make sure that those wires were very, very secure. Is this correct? Yes. I have no accessory stuff installed. Let's do Fahrenheit. I have a furnace. How do you want to be controlled by the Ecobee? And then this to me is my main floor, right? Because I don't think I have an upstairs and then I have this one. So main floor. And then now we can actually do the setup here, which I'm going to select a Wi-Fi network and then do all of the plug-in with this. But hopefully that helps anybody that's having a little bit of trouble with that. All right, so the Wi-Fi is set up. Now we have it on heat. And we're going to set this to 72. During the summer, let's say we're going to be 70. It'll give you a temperature range. This is the enable smart home and away in the US. Center. It's 10 11 here. This is where you need to make sure that you actually have the app.
then it gives you a code so you can actually register your app with this. So because I have the Ecobee up upstairs, you need to make sure that when you get this code that you're actually going to go to the Ecobee website and sign in or log in to your account so that you can actually register this second thermostat because it's not just going to show up in your app is what I found out. So then we actually are able to then load this from there because I have to use, like I said, the app in order to do that. And now it's going to add that for me here. And then in the app, it'll actually show up. So now that I have these both registered, I have main floor and upstairs. So that worked out. We are finished. And then now... Hello. I'm going to go ahead and actually peel this off now so we can get that looking a lot cleaner. One of the things that you need to do after it's all set up like this is if you do have um, Alexa, like I said, you're going to have to enable some of her skills. I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Because otherwise she ends up doing that. So if I say, for instance, right now, Alexa, turn the temperature down two degrees. I'm not quite sure what went wrong. She's not going to know that skill yet, so you actually have to go into the Alexa app and enable that skill within the app so that she'll do this. Now the cool thing is though, she'll play music from right here and it can be very, very loud. Um, Alexa, play Baba O'Reilly from The Who. Baba O'Reilly by The Who. Alexa, volume 10. Alexa, volume 5. Alexa, stop playing. So, she will actually control the volume. If you enable the skill, you'll be able to control the actual thermostat itself. And it gets pretty loud, which I'm going to showcase here in a second. Um, the one upstairs, I can actually hear all the way downstairs in my kitchen when it's on full blast and the music is actually going. So, very, very cool. And she'll do a lot of her other functions as well. Another cool thing is you can ask just what the weather is. Alexa, what's the current weather? Currently, in Broken Arrow, it's 43 degrees with cloudy skies. Today, you can expect snowy, rainy weather with a high of 53 degrees and a low of 18 degrees. Guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you do get the Ecobee, let me know in the comment section whether or not you like it, if you've had any problems with it, what you do like about it, what you don't like about it. If you have a Nest and there's some other things that you see with that that are better, let me know. Thanks for watching, guys.